Welcome, St. Matthew family. We're so glad you're here this morning. We're scrambling a little bit, but I think we have everything together. We are starting with announcements, and we're trying that out because we feel like if we do all of the announcements first, then we sort of get into a, a worshipful spirit, and we stay into that worshipful spirit for the rest of the service. So, um, remind you that we always have prayer warriors that are praying lots of prayers for Phil this week and I hope you saw the good news that he is waking up and and feeling a little bit better so if you have a prayer request remember that you can email it in you can call the church office you can call Elisa and they put that out on email immediately so that people can start praying about that we do have a great YouTube channel so if you feel like you need a little church in the middle of the week just go to YouTube and type in S-M-U-M-C, and then you can see our ch uh, channel on there, and there are all kinds of really cool things. Marlene's testimony is amazing. If you've never watched that, please go back and see it, and there's some really cool things. Our youth group is going to be meeting tonight at 5 o'clock, and we are working on stocking the snack pantry. And I put a picture of the kinds of snacks that we're looking for, you know, kids, they like cereal, cookies, chips, whatever. We want to make sure that they have a snack in the middle of all of that. We are, and you got this in email this week. We have a great relationship with Wester. Our pastor and Wendy have done a really good job of developing some trust with the, the uh, faculty and staff there. And they have asked, their teachers have asked for some special supplies. Um, some of us that are teachers know that, like, certain brands are really a little higher quality than others and so Wendy's going to put out a list if you want to buy some things for the teachers not for the students that would be appreciated but also if you want to commit some funds or want to go ahead and give some Wendy's going to try to do that a week from tomorrow so this week you know they're trying to collect the funds and get like expo markers and pencils and things that probably they don't have in their supply closet or they've run out of at this point in the year to help those teachers a little bit. So you got that email, look at it again. You can contact Wendy. She'll even come pick your donation up from your house if you want her to do that. Um, this month, the women's Bible study, the women's group is donating money to the uh, Mayos and their they do the World Gospel Missions in Africa, and so if you want to be part of that, this is the last day to do anything with that. Uh, our March focus on missions is the supplies for the Western teachers. We do have some great Lent activities that we are continuing, and we don't want to forget in this time of reflection when we're looking at Christ's sacrifice that there are some things to kind of help you with that. We will have a Sunday night prayer meeting tonight on Zoom at 7. And you can tell other people about that if they want prayers. You are welcome to come and stay the whole time or come for 10 minutes and then um, get off whatever you want to do. But there will be a prayer warrior there to pray for needs. And it's just a really sweet time that those of us who've been going have had. There are daily devotions that I hope you have seen. And if you want a paper copy of that, let us know. We have some up here at church. But we also have, uh, Elise has been putting those out every day. And there are many of them written by our church members. So really pretty fun, really neat thing. to do, Another way to get to know our church members and to just focus a little bit more on Christ every day. Just so you know, it's coming up. End of March, there's going to be a 24-hour prayer vigil. Jeannie will eventually put something out about that and ask people to pray for a certain time of the day if you are interested in that. We um, do even have, our pastor put out this week, some things about fasting, if that's something you want to try. And we know that er people have dietary restrictions and things like that. But if you want to um, try for a day or part of a day or as long as a week or three weeks, that's an absolute personal thing. And so he put a bunch of stuff uh, on an email about that, if that's something that you feel like would be a good part of your Lent experience. We do have a Lent study on Tuesday nights at 7. And so if you didn't grow up doing Lent or you didn't know, uh, you know what it means, it's really great to just learn about what Lent is about and uh, a little bit deeper study as far as that's concerned. It's always really neat when we do those extra studies. Tomorrow night, 
the uh, Transformers Women's Bible Study meets, and we are studying the women of the Bible. And so it's been really powerful, good study. If any of the women want to join, that will be on Zoom, and we will send out another reminder of that if anybody wants to join us. Wednesdays, of course, Brown Bags and Bibles from 12 to 1. We have several people who get on at work, and they stay for their lunch hour, and they're eating and everything, and then they get off when they have to go back to work. That's awesome, but we pray together. We worship together a little bit, and there's always a really good um, video from a, a pastor that the, our pastor plays for us, so it's good. We do have Praise and Teaching from Reality on Saturday night at 730 and we have some birthdays this week. I was hoping he'd be here this morning so we could wish him a happy birthday. But Randy Andrews' birthday is tomorrow. So if you want to send him a text or something. Carmen Stuvey's birthday is Friday. And then I think this must have, I want to hear the whole story about how you made sure Tim was not born on your birthday. Because Tim's birthday is on Saturday on the 6th. And so that's pretty fun. And our Scott Hawkins, who we want to be praying for because he, it looks like he is going down uh, starting some ministry, and so his birthday is next Saturday as well. And we have an anniversary this week, and that is Jill and Damon Andrews. So if you're if you're a good card person or you like to wish people birthdays, then you just want to make sure you know about that. We do have uh, up now, and it's always on our website. If you are one of those people who prefers to give to the church through an online venue. And so we have that on Aplos if that's something that you're interested in. If you would now join me in our opening prayer, I'm going to pray from Psalm 33, 20 through 22 to start us out today. Dear Heavenly Father, we wait and hope for you. You are our help and our shield. In you, our hearts rejoice, and we trust your holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, even as we put our hope in you. We give you our service. We give you all those who are listening online. We give you our song and our message. In your name we pray. Amen. Great to welcome everybody here into the sanctuary this morning and all those out on the World Wide Web that are joining us. And here at St. Matthew's, we are a Christ-centered family of grace where all are wanted. We are committed to becoming who Christ says we are, growing, living, and sharing one relationship at a time. Now, if you'll stand, we'll have a call to praise.
Number 591, Rescue the Perishing. Care for the dying, Jesus is 
Join me in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our hymn of inspiration is number 593, Here I Am, Lord. of sea and sky I have heard my people cry all who dwell in dark and sin my hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright who will bear my light to thee shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I is a time that we call God's people in prayer and that's just a time for us to come together as a body and lift up the requests that we know we've had for this week 
We'll have a little bit of time for you personally just to pray about whatever needs you have on our bulletins this week. If you picked one up, the needs that have come into the church are listed in the lower right hand side there. So any of those you're welcome to pray for if those are on your heart. And then we'll end together with the Lord's Prayer. So please just join me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come together as a body and as your people. And we thank you so much for blessing our church and for the people that are here and the people of our community so much. And we just praise your holy name and thank you for being such a big, mighty, awesome God. And we just lift up those families, Lord, the over half a million people who have lost loved ones to COVID. And during this time, even as we start recovering, we just pray for their hearts and all that they have to deal with in this time. And we continue to lift up our first responders and our doctors and nurses and all those who are involved with the vaccines and with caring for our COVID patients. And we just pray that you would be with them. And we thank you so much for the breakthrough with Phil and we just pray for his continued recovery. And we lift up Jenny, pray that she would just, just give her strength and give his children strength in this time and just, just Please pray. We, we ask you that he would be on the road to recovery. We lift up Aspen Village, and we have a couple of friends over there, one with a health need and, and other people with just <clears throat> tough times and financial needs, and we just lift those particular people up to you, Lord, and just pray blessings over that community and pray that they will feel the love of St. Matthew and feel learn a little bit more about you through us and we just lift up Austin Andrews and his recovery we lift up Kenneth Crow and his shoulder surgery recovery and we thank you for Bill being back home again safely we lift up Steve Hobart to you Kathy's aunt Betty J and her health issues and those in the state of Texas who are still dealing with electricity and water issues we just pray that you would be there for them and this morning, we also lift up Judy and pray that you would help her feel better this morning. Now we just bring our personal request to you. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer, and we have it up here on the screen if you want to read along. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, church family. Good to see y'all. Uh, there's some, man, I tell you what, there's some people here I haven't seen since March 15th of last year. So it's so good to see all of y'all. Welcome if you're joining us online as well. Uh, I'm just excited about what we have going on here at St. Matthew. And uh uh, love you guys very much. As we come to our offering time, we're not passing the plate here in the sanctuary. Of course, if you're online with us, you can give online uh, as well. That link is uh, uh, posted for you uh, right now there in our chat window on Facebook. And also, if you want to give online here, you can do that as well. Um, uh, we uh, are so blessed, guys, and we are so grateful and so thankful to what Christ is doing uh, in us and through us and with us and it's in all of that gratitude that we can come just really um, to just reach out to other people and love on other people uh, for the cause of Christ in our in our neighborhood and in our city and in our state and in our nation and in this and in this world don't think for a minute guys that you won't see any return on the seeds that you're planting amen you may not see them okay but I tell you what, something's going to happen with what Christ is doing inside of you and through you. And so with that, will you join me as we pray 
uh, for the, uh, uh, our offering today and also that God would bless every penny of that into a relationship uh, with us and his kingdom. Father God, we pray the power of your Holy Spirit be upon us right now, Lord. And Father, we do thank you. We are so grateful, God. We don't tell you enough, Lord. Sometimes we overlook the blessings. Sometimes we don't see them. Even the fact that we are here right now in this world that you created, that is a gift from you to us. You're a good, good Father. You're a great gift giver, God. And it's out of that, Lord, that we learn. It's out of that that we begin to know and realize and understand that us being in this world is not just about us, God, but it's about the beautiful people that you have put around us, and it's about us giving our devotion and love and obedience to you. And it's out of that devotion and love and obedience, Father, that, that we come to give, God. We give of our gifts. We give of our prayers. We give of our time, Father. We give of our money, Lord. And we ask that with all of that, Father, all of that, that you would bless that into turning this world into your kingdom, God. May it go to all kingdom work and relationships and healing and care and love, Lord, for those around us, Father. So thank you for the many blessings, God. We are speechless. It is beyond what we would ever think that we would deserve or ever think that we would get or ever think that we would gain from you, Lord. But yet, you give and give and give to us, Father. And so we love you, and we thank you. Give us your hands, give us your eyes, give us your voice, give us your heart, Father, so that we can give back into this world, God, that's around us every day. We love you, and all God's people said, amen. amen. If y'all want, you can stand for the reading of his word this morning. If you're comfortable right where you are, stay right where you are. If you want to stand at home with us, you can. If you're good with just sitting down, just sitting down. We're not too uptight about that. I'm going to read today from Luke chapter 11, and it's verses 5 through 13, and I'm reading out of the NIV version. So here we go. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, I like the way he puts that, your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, uh, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, how much more, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The reading of God's word for God's people. Praise be to God's word. Y'all can sit down. Thank y'all. Let me ask you this. What was the, thank you, way back in the day, man. What was the most meaningful gift that you ever received as a child? And if you're joining us online, I want you to chat that in. The most meaningful gift that you ever received as a child, I would like to know. Anybody? Thoughts right here? We can talk. They can't hear you on the internet. Okay, out there. So I might repeat what you say, though. Okay. Anybody? Most meaningful gift that you ever received as a child? Catcher's mitt. Catcher's mitt. Way to go, Ben. All right, man. Who else? A bicycle. A bicycle. Thank you, Mr. Ricker. Yeah, that's a good one. One more. Your car? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, y'all you know, might have been driving before uh, the teen years, you know, out there on the, the dairy farm and stuff. 49 Chevrolet, drag it home, overhaul it so it would run. I saw Monty do like this, so that must be a gun, Monty. Thank you. Well, those are great, or a rifle, excuse me. 
Those are great, 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 great gifts. For me, it was Johnny West. I don't know if y'all remember Johnny West. I've got a picture of him right here. He was an awesome action figure. Uh, I love my Johnny West. I took him to bed with me. I took him to the bathtub with me. I took him to school with me. I took him to church with me when mom wasn't looking. And man, let me just tell you, Johnny West was tough too. This guy, golly, had cars running over him, lit firecrackers strapped all around his body, you know. Nothing could faze Johnny West. Not even mean sisters kidnapping him and holding him for ransom. He seemed to have escaped and found his way back home every time. He could even withstand the viciously sharp teeth of Gleep, and Gleep was our family dog. So when all was said and done, there he stood, Johnny West, strong, 12 inches tall, right? Man, I love that guy. And you know, you know what's great about that guy is, is that he loved me back, you know. He loved me back. Now look, during the season of Lent, we're on this journey together. And we're going all the way from Luke chapter 9, the Transfiguration Mountain, all the way to Luke chapter 24, the empty tomb. And all of that, guys, is centered around this one core command that we heard last week. And it was, listen to him. And so this sermon series is called, Listen Up. So look, guys, as we read together and as we pray together and as we fast together, if you're going to fast during the month of March, this is going to be our rallying cry over the next few weeks for us. Now, look, for many of us, I get it. This is really going to require a radical shift of surrender where we intentionally lean into his voice. Instead of our own inner chorus of appetites and allegiances and personal affections. In other words, it is the death of self, ourselves, in exchange for his life inside of us. Amen? Us emptying ourselves to make space for him. Because look, we have crowded, busy Lives dedicated to many good worldly things. But let's let Lent interrupt all of that for just a moment. And let's listen to him. Listen to him. Now, having said all of that, I don't know if you caught it in our scripture text this morning, but here's what is odd about what we read today. Early on in this journey to resurrection, we receive this surprising word in Scripture reminding us that He listens to us. He listens to us. Like a good father who knows what his children need before they even ask, who delights in lavishing them with good, great, wonderful gifts, God is listening. He is listening. And look, not just listening, but He is listening to you right now. And he is listening to me right now. Now, we may not understand that. We may not be able to wrap our minds around that. We may not feel that. But you know what? It is absolutely true. Your heavenly Father loves you and hears every prayer, whether it ever crosses your lips, crosses your mind, or remains hidden safety in your soul. <laughs> I hear me. <laughs> That's good. That's okay. <laughs> you should watch, not only here, you should watch yourself after doing one of these things, man. It's not pretty. You know what I mean? We were talking about my belly at the Sunday school hour today, and I started the comment, you know. And so, boy, but I wasn't the only one that said anything about it. I'll tell you that right now. (laughs) But look, he does love you, and he hears every prayer. Whatever crosses your lips, whatever crosses your mind, or remains hidden safely, tucked away in your soul. And not only does he hear you, but guess what? He cares about you. He cares for you. Well, how do we know that he cares? We hear that all the time from preachers. We hear that all the time at church, right? How do we know that he cares? Well, here's how you know he cares. 
He, you know he cares about you because he tells us that in his word. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Matthew 6, 30, but if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Matthew eleven twenty eight. come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Isaiah 46, 4, listen to this one, I love this one. Even to your old age and gray hairs, right? I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. We know he cares because he tells us in his word that he cares. The other way that we know he cares is because of how he made each and every one of you. Just for a second, consider, and this might not be hard, consider how unique your life is, right? There is no place in the vastness of this universe, guys, like this planet that we live on. They're looking and they're searching, but they haven't found another one like us yet. And, and, and here, right here, we have been given life. And you know what? Among all the people who live right now and among all the people who have ever lived before you, not one of them is exactly like you. Not one of them is exactly like you. The uniqueness of your creation, the uniqueness of you, praise God, that alone is reason to believe that God has his eyes on you a.k.a. that God cares for you. The third way that we know that he cares is because we've been given direct access to him in prayer. Look, your prayers don't get forwarded to voicemail. You don't have to make an appointment with him. God doesn't have to check his calendar and then say, let my people get back with your people, right? You don't have to go through a secretary or an administrative assistant. You have a direct line to him. You own, your own connection with him is unlike anyone else's connection with him. It's uniquely yours and God's alone. I don't know if you realize that, but it's unique to you and to him. It's one of the things that makes your relationship personal with God. And look, you can talk as long as you want. A ball game's not about to come on, you know, or there's no eye rolling. There's no yawns. There's no I need to go or half-hearted complimentary nods. Mmm, 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 right? He is totally into you. He is totally into you, and he cares about you. God hears you. I want you to listen to this. God hears you. Some of you think he's not listening. I guarantee you, God hears you, and he cares. Now look, in our text today, Jesus offers this great three-fold relational invitation. And look, this isn't a formula, okay? And this, these are not steps to success. This is not the secret to fast results. It is a relational invitation to move you from the front porch into the living room. It's a relational invitation to move you from just an introduction into intimacy with him. It's a relational invitation to move from I've heard of him to I know him. So these three ways help deepen our relationship with God. Are you ready? Here they go. All right. First thing is he uses asking him to deepen our relationship with him. Well, okay, you might say, really, Todd? That? You're talking about prayer, right? That's what you're going to give me today? <laughs> with everything that I have facing me, with everything that I have going on in my life, everything that I need that I'm not getting, and you're really going to go there, you're going to tell me just to pray about it? Well, yeah, you know, I, I am. Let, let me ask you this, guys. When did prayer stop being enough for us? When did it become too shallow to speak to God of the universe, 
a child as a child speaks to a father, a loving father? When did the invitation to commune with the holy and cast our cares upon the almighty become cliché? When did it become pointless or when did it become useless or when did it become the Hail Mary of all other exhausted options? When did it become not the first thing that we do? God's prayer is cooperation with God. It's the purest form that God has given us that links us with him to work out the intentions that he had in mind for this world all along. Prayer is, surround, is surrendering to his will, and it's cooperating with that will. If, if I throw out a boat hook, right, from my boat, and I catch hold of the shore, and I pull, do I pull the shore to me, or do I pull myself to the shore? Prayer is not pulling God into our will, but it is aligning my will to his Prayer is aligning ourselves with the purposes of God. And when prayer fades out, guess what? Power fades out. We are as spiritual as we are prayerful. Let me say that again. We are as spiritual as we are prayerful. No more and no less. In the, prayer, in the prayer time, the battle of the spiritual life is lost or won. And if you don't surrender to Christ, guess what? We give in to chaos. Prayer dismisses chaos as our master, and it connects us with him as our master. Prayer connects us with life and draws us closer to him. So look, guys, this morning, if you don't hear anything else, hear this. He is listening. He is listening to you. So go ahead and ask. Go ahead and ask. Now, lots of things can happen when we ask God for something, right? <laughs> he can say yes. He can say no. He can say I have something better. He cannot say anything at all. He can say wait. He can even say you choose depending on the situation and the question. But one miraculous thing that always inevitably happens if we let it is this. That question can become a conversation. That question can become a conversation. Remember, guys, Jesus was a Jewish rabbi. And he often taught in the tradition of all the great rabbis, right? Meaning, he answered questions with what? Other, better questions and let me just say jesus has the power to change your life with a well-placed well-timed question and you know what this mostly describes my asking experiences with god like you want to know my will todd what are you doing with what you already know or you want more knowledge and revelation, Todd? But are you moving in obedience with what I've already taught you and revealed to you? Or you want the road map, Todd? But what about the steps that I've already shown you? Or you want more light on the situation, Todd? But what have you done with the light that I've already given you? Now look. That's not to intimidate us, guys, but it's to encourage us. Look, asking draws us into a conversation with the creator of the universe. Now, rather than just needing something, we are talking personally with God. We are engaged in conversation with God, and he is listening. And not only is he listening to the request, he is caring most, most about the one who is making it. Oh, how he has a way of getting to the core of our desires, right? Man, he can go right there and addressing what we need most. He listens well, and he knows how to give really, really, really good gifts. So he is listening. He cares. So guys, ask him and let him draw you into the conversation 
that you really need to have. It's a relational invitation for you to know God deeper. That's prayer. When I was seven years old, <laughs> we drove to Abernathy to spend Christmas with my grandparents. Now, I know I was seven because every time this horrible story was retold and against my wishes, it always started off, remember when Todd was seven, right? Anyway, when I was seven years old, we went to Abernathy to do Christmas with Grandma and Grandpa. And man, I couldn't wait to get there. And when we arrived, you know, I shot out of the back seat of that big burgundy four-door four -door Chrysler New Yorker like a rocket. And I ran right past the open arms of my grandparents into the house, right to the tree, right to the gifts. Now, that didn't sit well with my 100-pound mom. It was like this sweet, beautiful, tiny, delicate, dainty lady turned into a rabid gorilla. In a dress and heels, mom dragged me from the Christmas tree, through the den, through the kitchen, out the door, bounce, 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 down the porch, through the front yard, and through the gravel back to that burgundy Chrysler. She dusted me off, pulled my pants back up, and then let me try again. Fighting through way too much Charlie. Y'all remember that? Revlon, Charlie. It was the biggest hug my grandmother ever received from me. Anything less would have been life-threatening. Here's my point. Mom taught me a very, very good lesson that day. It's not about the gift. It's about the giver, right? So we have asking him, which can draw us into a closer relationship with God. The second thing that he uses to deepen that is seeking him, to seek him. And look, guys, that's really what the season of Lent is designed to be about, seeking. Remember, by design, Lent is an interruption into our lives to help us place our attention back on God. I mean, even if we take the ancient Christian practice of fasting, for example, and I you know, I sent y'all a book last week about fasting, right? Sorry about that, you know. But fasting during Lent challenges us to submit our most fundamental and essential cravings to our even deeper need. Fasting serves to focus our appetites and attention on the only one who truly sustains us. When we fast, guys, what we really should be seeking is not something but some one. Which are you seeking today? See, Jesus reminds us that if even a bad father knows how to give good gifts to his children, how much more, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more? How much more? Man, that's a great phrase, guys. How much more? These three words, how much more, could be of greater importance than ask, seek, and knock. In fact, our Father takes ask, seek, and knock and turns it into how much more. Ask, seek, and knock is usually really about what we are desiring from God, right? But how much more? How much more? is about what God desires for us. The gift or the giver. The gift or the giver. So I just want to encourage you, as we move further into Lent together, further into the practices of prayer, and if you're electing to fast, into fasting, to seek His much more for you. Because the reality is that his much more for you will really be much more of him. Much more of him. Now, I just mentioned knock. And so, let me just close on this. This is the third thing that Christ uses uh, to draw us closer to him. To knock. See, to knock is to act. It requires courage. And it requires risking. And Jesus indicates it is the act of knocking that really opens the door. There's not a hidden code. 
There's not a secret password. This is what Quakers would call plain speech. Christ says plainly in black and white, here, knock and the door will be open. See, here's our challenge with this, guys. Leading up to God, we've probably knocked on lots of doors in our lifetime. And we have probably been told to go away or to come back later. Or we've had them maybe open a little bit and then slammed shut right in our face. I get that. So because of that, we're afraid. We're afraid to knock. We don't trust it. We think it might be a setup or that we'll be tricked or treated cruelly in our need. But the image Jesus gives us is of a good father who delights in giving good gifts. He's not the friend who can't be bothered to get out of bed until you've banged loud enough and hard enough on the front door and then the back door and then, you know, on that window and this window to wake up the whole house. Our Father will not be pestered into action or annoyed into answering. You don't have to fight for His attention. We don't have to gain God's focus, nor do we have to compete for it. We don't have to live by that rule. If we do this or give up that, then surely God will take notice of our meager spiritual progress and give us the crumbs from the table as a reward. That's not who He is. And that's not who you are to him. God already notices you in a good way. God's attention and love is already all over you. Listen to him. He is telling you this right now as we are together in worship today. He sees you, he hears you, and he loves you. This season of Lent, does not put his focus on us. You know what it does? It puts our focus on him. So let's let it do that. Let's ask for that. Let's ask God to put our focus back on him. Let's seek that. Let's seek after him rather than trying to figure ourselves out and find ourselves. Let's knock on that door. Let's knock on his door rather than walking all the way up to his porch and turning away from it because we are listening to who the world says we are and not listening to who he says we are. Knock on that door and your father who knows how to give good gifts to his children will give more of his best gifts to you, namely from our text, the Holy Spirit and the gifts that go with him. So this week, I want to just challenge all of us here to uh, focus on, uh, as we do our fasting and our prayers, focus on how much more, how much more that God longs to pour that on us. Let's ask together as his children for more of the Holy Spirit. And look, let's surrender all that comes along with him. Let's ask and let's seek and let's knock for more fruit of the Holy Spirit, deepen gifts of the Spirit, more holy love that is the truest sign of the Spirit, and most importantly, more of the Spirit himself, guys. The how much more, the how much more is for you. Ask for it, seek it, take the action, and knock. Now, as the praise band comes up, I just want to say a little bit about the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit after Lent, but since it's talking about that in our text today, let me just say this. You know, one of the most underutilized features in Microsoft Word is the find and replace feature. How many of y'all know that even exists, right? Okay, good. Then your lives are much simpler <laughs> because you know that, right? But it's this great feature and no one really knows that it's there. But you know what? Once you realize that you have that feature and you learn how to use it, guess what? Your word processing work just gets so much easier. And look, the same is true with the Holy Spirit. If you're not familiar with the Holy Spirit or for some reason you're uncomfortable with talking about the Holy Spirit or maybe you've had some bad experiences where you've seen some things that some people were saying was about the Holy Spirit, I don't know. But look, I want to tell you this. The Holy Spirit is kind and loving and gentle, and He is wanting to be part of your life. 
And if you're doing life without him, you are missing out on his role as helper in doing life as a believer. Let me say it this way. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are trying to maintain it all by human effort. And we're getting exhausted rather than relying on him. Well, how do you get the Holy Spirit, right? You probably hear lots of things out there, but I want to tell you what Scripture says. Peter, in his Pentecost sermon, gives us the very direct answer right there. He says this in Acts. He says, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And then here's what he says. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul clearly taught about it that we receive the Holy Spirit the moment that we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 declares this, For we are all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether the Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Romans 8, 9. In that scripture, he tells us this, that if a person does not possess the Holy Spirit, he or she doesn't belong to Christ. You, however, this is what he says, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, then he does not belong to Christ. I'll get to that in a second. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 teaches us that the Holy Spirit is the seal of salvation for all of those who believe. Having believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, and it, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So look, I mean, from what we read, it's simple. To be filled and led by the Spirit of God does not require any great, hard, linked spiritual work on our part. In fact, you know what? If you're a believer, you already got him. So here's the deal. If you want to let the Holy Spirit lead your life, and if you want to walk by the Spirit, it's a conscious choice that we make each and every day, praying that the Lord would fill us with His Spirit, praying that we would walk by His Spirit. Then throughout your day, just watch and just listen for opportunities to obey the Spirit's promptings. In other words... We just plug into him every single day by asking, by seeking, and by knocking. So as we close today, let's just do that right now. We're going to ask, and we're going to seek, and we're going to knock right now. Pray with me. Father God, we love you, Lord. Lord, thank you so much, Father, for being such a good, good, good Father that is lavishing gifts upon us, Father. And Lord, we ask right now for the power of your Holy Spirit to be in our lives, God. Lord, some of us are running on empty. <laughs> Father, some of us are injured. Some of us are hurt. Some of us are confused, Father. Some of us were just kind of just dead in the water, Lord. And Father, maybe it's been that way for a long time. But Lord, as you pull us into your will, Lord, let us ask, let us seek, let us knock to get in a deeper relationship and a live relationship with you. And Father, we want, we need, we ask, Lord, this moment right now to be filled with your Spirit. And as we go along the rest of the day, Father, that the gifts of your Spirit would flow out of us Lord and father when we give out father we go back to you to fill back up Lord so father we thank you for your great helper we thank you for him Lord part of the triune the trinity the Holy Spirit the power of our lives not by us but by you God thank you father we love you and all God's people said amen if you need prayer this morning uh, I'll be down here as well and um, I love this last song. So you guys stand as we sing our praises uh, to him as well today. Amen and amen.
in Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of christ i stand oh, oh, oh. grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ oh Well, thank you very much for being here this morning or for joining us online. 
Um, and as we try to deepen our understanding of the Holy Spirit and, of course, deepen our relationship with our amazing Father, let's just remember what Jeremiah 29, 11 says, and that is that he has plans for us, plans for welfare and not calamity, to give us a future and a hope. St. Matthew is here. If you have a prayer request, please send it in to us, and we hope you'll join us for some of our meetings this week. Blessings to you and your family.